one way to get out of a lease is or make your lease shorter i thought i'd have a conversation with you guys while i dyed my hair or bleached it i've been through this before where i've bleached my hair and it didn't come out the way i wanted it to come out the first time so i thought i'd give it a try again see how it comes out this time a line on it from my hat <laughs> i had on earlier i don't know why it's like pressed into my skin like this so let's read the instructions again okay so step one is to put on the gloves and i decided that i think i'm just gonna use their gloves just in case this was the reason before why it didn't work out the bleach powder which is step two so we are pouring i think this was the thing where i had to shake it for a little while to get it to work okay so the next step says to put the lightning cream which is step three into this bottle so i'm going to open it squeezing it directly in so you're supposed to shake this up until it becomes creamy rich and creamy is what it said but while i'm shaking this i wanted to talk to you guys about um the medication that i was taking or the medication that i'm no longer taking so as you guys like if you've been following my story you know that i was put on sertraline um i want to say like maybe a month and a half ago almost two months now first of all i did not want to be on any psychiatric medication but i thought i'd give it a chance so disclaimer if you're not if you're not someone who's followed my story and this is like your first time watching one of my videos i'm a mental health therapist i work as a mental health therapist i currently hold a master's degree in professional counseling so my career revolves around psychiatric issues and psychiatric medications. I am not someone who is totally against medication and I'm not someone who pushes medication as a first option. I'm someone who feels that if medication is something that you need because you are feeling unstable, you feel like you can't manage and that's something that you want to do, I respect that that is something that you need i'm also an advocate for medication when it's someone who is just completely unstable where they have like lost touch with reality reality and they lack insight into their own mental health issues like tonight i had someone who is truly manic psychotic having a delusional episode that person i feel needs medication for me in my situation i don't feel like medication was something that i needed after giving it a try for about a month and a half i decided that it's not something that i want to take and i need to stop taking it initially i went to the doctor i was talking to my family planning doctor the one that does my birth control i was telling her that i had a lot of anxiety and that the anxiety was triggering digestive issues for me where my food wasn't digesting so a normal person's digestive system food should digest within like two hours after eating a meal but for me the food was like staying in my stomach for way longer than two hours where i was feeling like i couldn't go to sleep it was it was interrupting my sleep and i work graveyard shift so sleep is very important and i need it and it was interrupting my sleep to the point where i would like try to fall asleep and then wake up like an hour or two later feeling like I had like a rock in my stomach like I had to throw up or something and so that was going on for like maybe the last two years like ever since like I said if you've been following my story ever since I was living with my roommates with the cat if you guys have been following me that far back it this has been going on since then she told me to make an appointment with medical so i left her appointment made an appointment with medical got in with medical and i told medical when i got there this is my first time meeting this new doctor i never met her before i told her that family planning recommended that i come have labs drawn she said that my family planning doctor already kind of gave her the lowdown on the situation so she was pretty familiar with my case already so she said Let's run some labs, but first she wanted to have a conversation with me and get to know me, basically. I explained to her about my anxiety. I explained to her that I've had anxiety my entire life. I didn't always know what it was, but I knew that something wasn't always right. And so um, the earliest 
memory I have of having anxiety would be probably middle school. I remember like always being the very sweaty child in middle school. I was always somebody that would be really nervous whenever the teacher like sat me in between two people and I'd be just a sweaty mess by the time school was over. So I was explaining to her that as I'm getting older, my anxiety is starting to affect my digestive system to where my food, like I said, is not digesting properly. So she wanted to also talk about other things that might be causing my anxiety. So we started talking about stress and work and family. Family is a very, 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 very touchy subject for me. My family is like a source of some stress for me. So we started talking about that and when we kind of was, you know, getting into the history of family and like me being the oldest of seven and all this stuff, we kind of had that conversation. I became like really tearful in her office. And I didn't mean to cry, but I'm very emotional and I'm very sensitive sometimes. So when you hit a sensitive subject for me, you're going to trigger some tears, which is fine. It's okay to cry. It doesn't mean that you're weak or anything like that. She asked me if I considered therapy, like if that's something that, like, I don't know if I got this in where right? I don't know what I'm talking She asked me if I had ever considered therapy and I told her that I tried therapy in the past. So back when I lived in Savannah and I was going through the counseling program at school, it was recommended that we see a therapist. So my first therapist that I saw was an old white man. And that was like a horrible experience because he really didn't understand a lot of the things that I was telling him. It was like a, I don't know if because I'm black, it just felt like a barrier. I ended that relationship. So then my next therapist that I had was a white older woman, maybe in her late 40s, early 50s. She was very fixated on family dynamics and doing like genograms. She wanted to focus on that. And this is back when I was like extremely depressed about my ex. We had broken up multiple times. I just felt like he was messing with my life, going through the program. He was keeping me from like focusing and accomplishing my goals because I was like so hung up on him. And so that's kind of like where, what we were focused on. And it just got to the point where I felt like she wasn't really helping. And so I ended the sessions. So I haven't been back to therapy since. And this is like 2013, 2012 era, like kind of at the end of my program. So since then, I've utilized like coworkers and stuff, you know, for conversations about my personal life. I've talked to them, you know, about my relationships and, you know, how I feel, my emotions, my anxiety, my depression. I've utilized them. And that, like, I felt like they may not agree, but I felt like it messed up my relationships with my coworkers. Or that, you know, as a therapist, I kind of already know the tools as in like coping skills and things like that, I kind of already know like what the therapist is gonna tell me to do and so therefore I don't really wanna waste my time and money. She said, you know, she felt like I wasn't enjoying my life, that I was just kind of existing and just kind of going through the motions of life. And I'm just like, yeah, so yeah, I am. I am, I am existing. I'm, but I told her I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm still getting up for work. I'm still functioning. And she said, but are you? Are you functioning? And so she recommended sertraline. She explained to me like what kind of side effects I should expect. She explained to me how the sertraline is probably going to help my anxiety as well, which would there, you know, therefore help would help the issues that I'm having with my stomach basically. So she thought this was going to be like the end all be all for me. So she started me on 25 milligrams. I told her, um, that I wasn't comfortable with this. And she was like, well, if the social lean doesn't work, then we could try Wellbutrin. If uh, you wanna try them both together, we could try them both together. We can try them both separate. Um, she was telling me about the different SSRIs and she said it's not that big of a deal to move from one SSRI to another one. And so I was like, whatever. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is I can get better. I'm not gonna die. So I was like, I'll give it a try. I said, my patients are on sertraline. I've seen my younger patients on sertraline, the ones that are like 14, 13. So if they're taking it, it must not be the most dangerous drug. We met maybe like three, 
maybe three and a half weeks after I started the 25 milligrams. And then she, um, I was explaining to her that I was feeling like really fatigued, really lethargic, and it was affecting my work. And I told her that I felt like I was glitching and, and she didn't understand like what I meant by glitching. Basically. So I told her that I felt like I was like losing track of time. Like, like I'd be driving, like, have you ever like been driving and you're like really exhausted and you're like, how did I get home? It's like, that was happening while I was driving. It was like, whoa, how did I get to this exit? Whoa, how did I get to this place? Whoa, how did I get this far? Whoa, was I paying attention? Like, it was really scary. And so I was trying to tell her that and she was like, it's probably because you're not on a ther at a therapeutic dose or a therapeutic level yet with your sertraline. So let's try raising it. She said a therapeutic level would be about 200 milligrams for me. So she said, let's raise it. So she wanted to, she wanted to jump straight from 225 milligrams to 100, but I was scared. So I told her no. So she said, okay, we'll do 50. So she puts me on 50 milligrams. She told me to take 50 milligrams for like five days. And then she said to jump it up to 100. I'm already pissed off. So I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. I don't really want to take medications. Um, I don't feel comfortable. And she's like, well, let's just give it a try. Let's try to get you up to the therapeutic dose. Cause she said the fatigue that you're feeling and the glitch that you're feeling is not normal. It's not something that you're supposed to be feeling with the surgery. And she said, or we could just switch you to Wellbutrin, switch you to something else. And I was like, no, I said, I'll, you know, I'll give it a try. So I did the 50 milligrams for like five to seven days. And then I jumped up to 100. The plan was for me to meet her again in May. And we were supposed to move up to 200 milligrams. I canceled that appointment because I had a long talk with myself. And I was like, you know what? This is not something that I feel like I want to do. I completely understand where she was coming from, where she's like worried about my depression. She's worried about the fact that I'm not happy and the fact that I'm not living life to the fullest like I should be living life. Like I know she's worried about that, but I also felt like this was our first time meeting and I don't feel like medication should have been prescribed on the first visit, basically. So I canceled my appointment with her in May she had i don't think she's noticed yet because she hasn't emailed me or anything uh usually doctors can communicate with you through my chart and she hasn't sent me a my chart message and so i'm just gonna assume that she doesn't know that i canceled my appointment yet i have been titrating myself off or weaning myself off of my zoloft by myself so i because i work in the healthcare field i kind of already know how to do it um, so basically what you want to do is if you're taking, and this is not something that I'm telling you to do if you're supposed to be on a regimen and this is something you've been taking long term. But for me, I, you know, I went down from my 100 milligrams to 50. I dropped myself back down to 50 milligrams and I did that for seven days. And then after seven days, I dropped myself down to 25 milligrams. Now I was supposed to do 25 milligrams for seven days, but I only did it for four days or five days. So I stopped it after five days. So today is gonna be day three without taking Zoloft. I met with my family planning doctor like last week and she told me that sometimes people who stop Zoloft they feel like a little buzzing sensation in their head. And she said that it might be safer to drop down from 25 milligrams to, um, I think like 7.5. And so she said to take the pill, the 50 milligram pill, break it in half to 25 and then break that in half. So you're taking like a quarter of a pill. I thought about doing that, but I was like, I feel like if I keep dragging this out any longer, I'm never gonna get off of this medication. So I just made the decision to stop. I feel like, no, I'm not the happiest person in the world. I'm not the most excited person in the world. I don't really get excited about much. I'm pretty like a bland personality. Like if you follow me, you know, like my personality is very bland, but I just don't feel like medication was something that I needed. Like, I don't feel like it was something that I should have been put on after one meeting. I felt like she should have given our relationship a better chance before just saying, hey, why don't you take Zoloft? Like, you should never do that on the first meeting with someone. Like, even if they are crying, even if you think that they are depressed, like I never told you that I was like so depressed to where I'm not getting out of bed, so depressed to where I'm not functioning. I told you I'm not happy. 
and I didn't tell you I wanted to be happy. <laughs> I never, I never once said to my doctor that, hey, I'm not happy and I want to be. I'm not happy and I want to change in my life. I'm not happy and whatever. I never once said anything like this to you. So why are you putting me on antidepressants? So she just like gave me the wrong, she just rubbed me the wrong way. My family planning doctor told me that it was okay for me to switch doctors if I felt like I needed to do that. Um, she said that if I felt uncomfortable with anything that the doctor did, that I do have the right to switch doctors. I still need a doctor for my Zofran. And my family planning doctor said that she cannot prescribe Zofran and so um, I still need to see medical for the Zofran. Right now I have enough Zofran to last me for a couple of months. I still have like a couple of packs in here and I've got three in here and then I just got two new boxes of Zofran. So I've got 60 here so 60 plus the three plus a couple of sheets in here. I don't even know how many is in here. If I count it I'm going to get anxiety so I'm not going to count it. I think if I wait it out a little bit she'll probably forget about me. <laughs> She won't forget about me. She's gonna, she's gonna realize that I canceled my appointment. But anyway, I just wanted to give an update and just be like kind of transparent about what's going on while I bleach my hair. Um, yeah, I just got off work and I just had a lot of energy and I just felt like bleaching it. So it is currently turning orange, which is gonna be this orange color. I just wanted to like play around with some colors in my hair since it's like shaved. I'm like, why not? Why not bleach it, color it, dye it red, black, pink? Oh my god! I was looking at that. I was looking at the Horrible Decisions podcast. I don't know if you guys watch Horrible Decisions um, or listen to Horrible Decisions, but um, Mandy had pink hair in the last episode I saw, and it was like so cute. And I was like, I want to do pink hair, so I think I'm gonna order some some like temporary pink hair and see how it looks. Oh, also. This is another update. Your girl is ready to move again because I'm just over this apartment. Like, it's a nice apartment. There's nothing wrong with it. But I am just, like, kind of just over it and just ready to move. I'm bored. I'm bored with it. So I am going to be looking to see what other apartments this management company owns. And then I'm going to head to my next apartment. I know when I moved in, he told me that they do have a location in Kirkland. And... Um, I've been in Seattle for so long so I'm just like Kirkland again I lived in Kirkland when I first moved here and I was like oh okay but he said it's gonna be a new new building like a new LED like upgraded building so I don't know how much these apartments are gonna cost but I he said that they should be ready in July so I'm gonna see maybe if like in June we have the option of like touring it at least so I could see it and then I can make arrangements to move in July one thing if you guys don't know one way to get out of a lease is or make your lease shorter transfer apartments because when you transfer apartments you end up signing a new lease and you can change the length of time so it say i'm stuck in a 12 month lease i believe after the first four months you can um change apartments and then you can just sign a shorter lease so sign like a two month lease or three month lease and you can get out of your lease in seven months and you won't have to stay for the whole 12 if that makes sense or you can change buildings if your um apartment um owner like the per so like the name of your apartment there's like an owner of the building that they might own like multiple apartments and you should be able to not only transfer within your building but also you can transfer complexes basically so you like I can move to Kirkland and shorten my lease and this apartment gave me um two months free so April and May was free so I moved in on February 15th I had to pay March rent and then April and May are free so if I move out June 1st I would only have paid one month's rent and then I just have to pay the transfer fee and then start all over again so we'll see but yes, I'm ready to move again. And then I also have some wigs that I haven't worn. They're half wigs. I don't know if anybody would want them, but this is like a curly haired one. It's a half wig. It is by the um, 
Girls and Kinks and Co's. So they are half wigs. So the first one has like brown in it and it's brown and curly. And this is what it looks like. It's a showstopper. And it's a textured half wig. It's for kind of like a natural hair texture. It's curly. And then the second one is a shorter version that it is 1B color. And this is what it's supposed to look like. But it came looking a little bit tightly curled for me. So, um, this one is also a half wig. This one has never been opened. So, so a half wig. So, um, like I said, they're posted on my Macari page if you want them. This one has a little bit of brown in it. And it says the curl type is 3B to 4C. Curls and Kinks collection this is for black women. Don't ask me. I ended up having to wash my face because some bleach got on my face. But how do you turn like your bleached hair into like white like what do you do because like i left the purple shampoo in for longer and i think it like kind of did nothing <laughs> so um and it was the purple shampoo that came with it last time i did this it didn't make my hair white i'm getting ready to put some toner on my face how do you make your bleach hair white like somebody comment this is like my third time bleaching my hair in my life so I'm not like a pro on making bleached hair white I have no idea and I'm not gonna put any um, shea butter on my face I usually try not to put that on my face because it's pretty heavy at night so I just or in the day because I'm about to go to sleep but I do put like a little bit of rose hip a couple of months ago I haven't been doing it very long so I'm not like an expert on like what rose hip does the benefits and all that I don't know <laughs> It just says facial oil. It had vitamin E in it. I heard that vitamin E is good for dark spots. It's got... My camera never focuses to show you guys. I always try to show you and it never works. I'm about to go to bed and wake up. Hopefully the white hair. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Talk to you guys later.